What should we talk about today? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about Kevin's favorite hats. One of my favorite hats. Um, what does Kevin recommend in terms of being good, reliable hats? What's a good hat? Let's talk about that today, okay? Um, firstly, I'm going to say uh, Try a shorter, a little shorter brim, like a two inch brim with a welted edge. Naturally, they tend to be just stronger hats. Um, hats with big brims and big soft brims, especially, uh, tend to sell. Uh, people like raw edges and they like those bigger brims, kind of like two and three eighths, two and a half or more. Um, they're very popular. Those two elements equal a hat that really needs to be stiff uh, in order to hold up its own weight, much less the weight of water, uh, rain, snow, and stuff. What happens is it could be rainproof, but what happens is since it's so soft, it just, the curve of it, the flange just opens up kind of like, like this because of the weight, and then it dries just like that, flat. Um, 
it's the stiffener that's really holding it up in place. You, you shape it with wooden blocks and you lock it in with heat, steam, and stiffener. Um, as you hold your hat, you pinch it, you put it down on the table, all these things, you get these little microscopic cracks in the stiffening and it starts to break down and uh, your hat gets softer and softer, which is normal. Uh, it's one reason why they say keep it hung up or upside down. Of course, there's less grabbing and there's less contact with the table, the brim and stuff, you know. Um, the top of the brim, this is, the top of the crown is very stable and hard structurally, you know, so weight on that is not a big deal, although it could get a little dusty, it's usually not a problem. Weight on the brim is, so. Um, the long and the short of it is, you're going to do better with a stiff brim or a shorter brim. Um, that's just it. If you're doing a bigger brim like, you know, a, a Whippet Temple uh, Style Master kind of size brim, uh, two and three is two and a half, bigger, three inch, it's just got to be stiff. Uh, something like the Madrid is it's a good snappy felt. It's nice. Uh, not stiff, but stiff enough. Um, that's my critique. When you start buying certain hats, that felt gets a little bit thinner. Um, it has trouble holding that tight curl to the flange because there's just not enough. There's just not enough mass there to create the stiffness that you need to hold it in shape. It's almost like dipping it in plastic, the stiffening spray. And every time you steam it, what you're doing is you're melting that plastic coating. You manipulate it and then you let it cool into place. It hardens again, the little plasticky coating. Okay? Um, when you buy a hat that's stiffer, it's just going to hold the brim better. When you buy a hat with a shorter brim, generally, there's just less problem. It's this little hard kind of scoop. If you've noticed, the bigger the brim, the flatter the flange. The shorter the brim, the more scoopy and curved the flange looks. Um, it's the shape of the blocks are like that, generally. Um, they just start relaxing as they get wider, you know? Um, I don't know what it is, it's just physics, I guess. It, it, it equals out, you know, you, you don't want it to look really, really curled up. Um, but, that is a thing. So if you like a nice curl on your brim, consider going down a size and get something, instead of like a, a very light, luxurious, soft felt, like a temple or a, uh, a cyrus, which is a velvety hat with a raw edge, known for luxury and comfort, get something that's got a little snap -a rooney to it and maybe a little shorter brim, you know, um, one or the other, like a, a Kubra Style Master, very nice, nice brim. Um, all of their flanges, uh, flanges and curves on their brim are generally really good. Um, anything with a snap brim, that is, I mean. Um, Stetson Saxon in black or blue, really nice. The gray I think we're sold out of right now. Um, has a really good, um, you know, flange, good snap to it, kind of like the back of my hat. See that? Okay, let me show you a wider brim hat of mine. This one just happens to be on the top of the stack. I have three or four of them stacked up over there. Okay, look at that. See the difference? Okay, raw edge, big brim. People like this, it's a trend, but uh, you're gonna see more results with the shorter brims and the welted edges, stuff like that. It's just like, you know, I'll leave this out actually. It's a thing. Um, it might be one reason why uh, all the older men wear those two inches and one and a half and one and three quarter inch brims because they, uh, they're easy to maintain. Um, I'm sure it's more like looks, you know, but uh, they are super easy to maintain. Um, Stetson Asher, Stetson Saxon, those are two hats that I love. Um, it's no secret, I think the Asher is one of the best designed short brim hats ever. Um, of any company. I really love it. Um, another hat I really love is the Seville by Rocher. It's one of our custom hats. It's styled after an old uh, 1990s uh, to uh, uh, about early 2000s um, Borsellino hat we, we created called the Classico, which was um, their signature hat at the time was something called the Como. And it was 
their signature I had for at least 20 years, probably twice that or something. And um, it had a very high, kind of a pointy high crown, sort of high and, yeah. So every time I would sell one, the first thing I would have to do is just like, even before I handed it to them, I would lower that crown a little bit and kind of unpointy it. It was like very, you know, pointed and extra high. It's part of the look. 95% of the people I'd have to lower it for, and it would just look balanced, especially if you were short or forget it, you know, it would be a nightmare. So you had to know about, you know, shaping crowns a little bit and getting the center crease, the right height and stuff, uh, and especially in the front. We took it, um, we made some improvements, going by customer demand, we got rid of their high crown, okay, we lowered it to a regular old crown size. And we got rid of the whip stitch and we just put a regular raw edge on it. Um, and I believe that's it. We, we changed the name to the Classico, which was just a name we created. Um, and we sold that for many, many years. That became my green hat later on, my Kelly green hat with the piping is the Classico Plus. Um, none of these hats exist anymore. They're all just gone. Um, but it was one particular crown shape they had in their bag that was just lower and didn't have their signature high look. We took it, we created a whole series around it. This is one of the lower crowns too, the Anello. But um, those hats are all gone, I believe, unless you're like a six, seven eighths or an eight or something. You know, you might have one or two left. I, I doubt even that. Um, so we came out with the Seville, which is essentially the only way to bring that hat back right now, um, because um, right now we're very, very into the quality of the Rocher stuff and their price point. And uh, we like the fact that we could tell them, make the brim a little bit stiffer, not crazy stiff, but make it a little stiffer, make the crown softer. So that you could shape the crown and keep it nice and cool, vintagey, but um, get a little extra snap to the brim, yeah? So that's, you know, totally custom, the, the way we write it, the leather, everything, you know, the logo inside, the lining, it's all done to our specs. Uh, uh, we picked the colors, the widths of the bands, the type of edges, the type of everything, the, you know, the texture of the felt, the qualities of the felt, the color, the color combinations, the color of the leather sweatband inside, you know, where we write our name, everything. All done to our specs. Uh, the type of bow, is it a double bow, you know, the cross piece in the middle. So the Seville is completely um, designed by us, but it's an echo of that old style that we can't really make anymore because uh, we don't deal with that company and uh, the company is going through some weird transitions in Italy. So we switched to this uh, Spanish company, Rocher, which has this just this guy who makes this state-of-the-art felt. Uh, we were selling these uh, really nice beaver hats from them and uh, we just expanded it. We do a beaver and mink hat. We do a, the, the rabbit one. Uh, which is the Seville. We do shorter brim one, which is a Ken. Um, we have a few pieces of the old version of the Ken, which has a welted edge. Um, that's called the Cordoba, and that's on half price, which is incredible. It's below, well below um, wholesale. There's also a 30%, I think, on top of that now or something. So, you know, you could get a hat for like whatever, 80% off or something. That's sick. Um, I didn't do the math, I guessed. Bad math. But, um, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, okay. Um, what I'm going to say is, yeah, uh, Rocher is good stuff. Um, very, very few styles. The only style from them I wasn't crazy about was this old three inch brim we used to do that's long since uh, discontinued now. But, um, it's, it's not the Madrid, it's one that we had just a long time ago, and um, I had a, one where the flange was not that great, but I think it had more to do with the way that the brim was stiffened, but, you know, I would just give that hat like an 80% instead of like a 98%, and their stuff is good, really good. Um, it runs a little tight, just the way the Italian stuff and, you know, most of that European stuff runs. So you have to go up a size in it. It's generally one exact size tighter than Stetson. I've had two people say that it ran a little tighter than that. Um, that's very hard to 
explain. Um, I think Stetson is very, very erratic with their sizing. If you take like uh, three, two, two temples off the wall, you know, they'll be different. Um, so sometimes it actually helps the sale because like, you know, one will be tight and I'll say, wait, 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 wait. I go upstairs and they get, you know, two more and stuff and uh, I look for one that's bigger. I eye it out and then the second temple fits them perfectly and they're cool with that. So. It's weird. Their stuff's a little erratic with sizing. Uh, some of their stuff runs right. Some of their stuff runs a little bit big. Um, not so much tight, but more big and and on the money. So it's uh, just inconsistent. So uh, I'm gonna still stand by the fact that Rocher and the JJ stuff, like the Seville, the Can, the Madrid, they all run about one size too tight. Um, if you're comparing it to a, a brand like. Uh, like Stetson or Cooper or something. So, go up a size. Go up two sizes if you like it, oversized and stuff, just to be you know, careful. You could always pat it down. Um, I like my stuff oversized. It's kind of a look, you know? I like to tuck one ear in, one ear out, and do an extreme sort of a tilt. And that solves the, you know, your hat is so big, bumping into your ear thing. So your ear doesn't fold over. And just do an extreme tilt, stick one in, and it, it feels good to me and actually looks cool too, I think. So that's like my thing. Um, other hats that I really like, okay, I'm gonna mention a couple. Um, you've heard me say this too, anything by a Kubra. Uh, a Kubra, a Kubra. I love everything that we've sold by them. Um, you know, every hat, you know, they're not all fedoras. Some of them are downturn brims and stuff. Some of them are flip up like westerns and stuff. But, um, the Style Master is impeccable. I love it. The Bushman is something that I love as well, but it's going to be unavailable because uh, they discontinued it. But uh, we might be getting the Camp Draft. Hopefully we'll, we'll uh, change it to the Camp Draft, which is almost the exact same model. It'd take like maybe a quarter inch off the rim or something. And uh, uh, Cooper, yes, definitely. Uh, shorter brims, yes. Welted edges. Yes. Um, light felt. I like light felt. Um, I like the fact that you could buy a hat for like, you know, 125 bucks, made in USA, that rolls up, you could put it in your pocket, it lasts a long time, and it would probably do better in the rain and snow than like 50% of the fur felts out there. So it's very stable. Um, they always keep their shape and stuff but it's not gonna last you long like a fur felt. A fur felt just never shrinks. Where a wool felt, if you give it the snow and the rain and bring it into your hot apartment, it tends to shrink like, you know, a quarter millimeter or something every season, and then it kind of catches up. And what happens is after, you know, 10 or 15 years of that, there's so much shrinkage that there's less hat. Because it's not that it's tight. Um, the hat gets tight, like you stretch it out, you pull it. So you end up with this kind of mushroom thing. You might have seen people with these old shrunken hats that just kind of look like the tip of a mushroom. So there's just not enough left to give you the whole brim. So it's just kind of like, that's all that's left, you know. And uh, it just kind of goes into like a V, like a, you know, it's all that's left. So shrunken hats, yeah. Um, light felts, I figure they were worth it. So if, if you're going to get the shrunken mess after like 15 or 20 years, and it's half the price of a fur felt, it's kind of worth it, you know, because for the first five to seven years, they're gonna look really good and stuff. Um, and then after that, you know, they start to get a little bit beat, but uh, it really depends. You know, if you don't wear it in lots of rains and stuff and you treat it well, it could last you a very, very long time. But I like light felts. I like the blues fedora. Um, it runs a little big, remember that? And I like the uh, Atlantic. I like the Outback hat by Capus Headwear, made in uh, New York. It's a good one. Also rollable. All three of those are. Um, all the light felt stuff. Uh, I'm just into it, and I think they're really good. Um, let's talk about a few other hats uh, that I like. Um, I like some of the heavier felt Stetson fedoras. Um, the Calico which uh, Stetson has a strange name for that hat, um, 4484 or the 424, it's something like that. We changed it to Calico. Um, 
So the calico is a three inch brim, very thick felt. It's thick, um, like a dune or an open roll road, but not stiff like an open road. It's soft, soft like a fedora, but thick. So it's like double thick, no pinches in the front. So picture, you know, no pinches, big brim, you know. Um, it's a really, they, they classify it as a West, Western fedora, which is like a totally new, you know, it's kind of like a fedora with Western trim. They put like this little lanyard underneath the, uh, the ribbon and bow, but the lanyard does come off if you don't want the, you know, the trendy little thing under the bow. It comes off very easily with just a couple of stitches cut um, neatly and you won't affect the hat. And it also comes with a big, like a pheasant feather too. So it looks sort of trendy, Gary Clark Jr. thing, you know, like a Nick Fouquet-esque kind of trendoid thing. Um, but not as wide as the Stetson Tri-City, which is like three and three quarter inches or, or more or something. You know, I forgot how wide that one is. It's super wide. Um, anyway, um, that, that I actually own that hat. I thought it was a little too wide for me. Um, I like a, a big brim, but not quite as wide as that. Um, I think I traded my Tri-City for my Royal Blue flat hat for a co-worker. Um, but yeah, try something in a little shorter brim and you'll see that the, the curves are a little bit more snappy and pronounced, you know, like uh, like I said, like this Anello. This is a sh little shorter brim, but you see, the front is a little, you know, but still, with all lots of abuse, you know. This is a, a good brim, if you watch. hundreds and hundreds of times. So a very good flange, well-made hat um, that you just can't really get anymore. Unfortunately, the quality has changed on these. But uh, if you like this hat, I would say the closest thing would be the Stetson Saxon, which has a, a thicker welted edge, it's welted under, or the Ken, which is uh, made by Rocher. That would be the European upgraded version with a raw edge and a whip stitch. Uh, so that's the Euro version. The Saxon is the Stetson. It's a little bit more like, you know, American cool classic. The Ken is a little bit more elegant and fashionable sort of, you know, GQ guy because it's, it's just very fashionable, classy. The lines are just perfect. Um, but my feeling, my feelings are this, you know, when you have a hat like the Ken that's a slightly higher crown than the uh, Saxon, you have the ability to do a lot of things. You can do both. You could keep it high or you could just lower it to a Saxon height by just doing that, you know, and you're down to a Saxon. Um, but if you want to go higher and get a little bit dressier look, you bring it back to its stock height. There's your dressier, higher look. You want to go a little more casual, hanging out, you know. You don't want to look like too, you know, staunch or whatever, starchy. You bring it down. Work different ways, you know. It's all in the presentation, how you present yourself. It's like giving your hat a makeover. So now we're going casual with the lower, lower crown. Bring it back up to its high zone. Bring it, you know, now we're Mr. Elegant, the GQ thing, a little higher, you know. Um, feel free to do that. You know, if you want to change the height of your crown, you just do it right there in the front. Take it off, look at it, make sure that this little U piece here is nice and, you know. Everything looks nice and neat, but uh, that's the idea. Just the front, right here, this area, goes up and down, up there. Bring it down. Um, what else can I talk about that I really like? Um, I've said this too, I like the Celentino hats uh, from the Czech Republic. Um, I don't know what the deal is with them. They're just so good. Uh, they're designers. I think they've used the same designs, the same bows, the same fonts and linings. Everything's been the same forever. They're one of the oldest hat companies from 1799. So they predate, you know, the Italian companies, the Spanish ones, the U.S. ones. And they know their stuff. They have more colors than, you know, almost anybody. 
uh, more options. They still do long hair beaver. They do uh, short hair shiny silk beaver like a peluche, which is uh, I think French for like stuffed animal. It's kind of like a, a teddy bear uh, finish, like a shiny short hair beaver. Um, they do velour, full velour. They also do um, suede felt finishes. They do regular finishes. Um, they're incredible. The, the bind, binded, bound edges, the bound edges, the little cross pieces on their bow, like on the Lexington, not the Lexington, that's what we used to call it 10 years ago, the uh, Hamilton, it's called now. The Hamilton, gorgeous. Um, I love that bow on the Hamilton. And um, getting down to it, it's all about the quality. It's the, one, the way the hats wear. Um, I can steam them and I don't have to worry if this model or that model is a little thin, this model or that model is a little finicky or whatever. It's all good. Um, zero cosmetic uh, problems. There's no threads loose or anything like that. They don't make any mistakes with the threads on the band. There's no, you know, any threads anywhere. It's clean. Um, uh, bang for the buck incredible I think uh, they're worth the price and they have so many colors that you know we can pick like a mustardy cognac or a dark cognac or you know a rust um, they have colors like aqua and orange and you know all these crazy colors they do um, and really uh, I think as time goes by we'll probably uh, get more of their stuff but just not this year um, this year they're pretty much uh, done. We'll be getting other things, you know, a lot of Stetsons. Uh, we'll even be getting some Dobbs, I think, and lots of other surprises. But um, yeah, Salentino, we have to order these huge, huge blocks of them. So it's a little difficult to just keep reordering fill-in orders. So we order one huge order at the beginning, and um, it's the way uh, we had to do it this year. But uh, let's move on. Um, hats that I really, really like. Um, I tend to like the things that are very classical too. I like uh, the Panamas, like our Panama Bogart uh, with the teardrop. I, uh, even better, I love the, um, we have one, the Panama Center Crease, which is really nice uh, from Capus. All the Capus Panama hats, Capus headwear, that's in that 125, 135 uh, range, 150. Uh, they're all just really nice. They have a um, little uh, inside of the, uh, the crown right in here. They have sort of a reinforcement um, where people tend to grab them and crack the Panamas here in the front. They're reinforced inside with like a heavy duck cloth with sort of like an epoxy underneath it. And they put that same duck cloth and epoxy stuff under here. So it's in there under the sweatband. So when you sweat, all the parts that make contact with the body right here are being blocked by this sort of barrier. It's sort of like a cotton canvas in there, very heavy. They just put it right around here and um, it keeps the sweat from coming through the Panama. And uh, they have the same stuff in the tip here. They glue it to the tip inside. So even if you manage to crack the Panama from grabbing it off the table so many times, you're grabbing it, grabbing it, grabbing it. You, even if you crack it, it's still held together on the inside by that piece of um, canvas which is glued you know in in it very nicely so it's almost like safety glass it keeps it together despite the crack so you don't get these holes you could stick your hand through and stuff um, so all these features they have on there you know they're free they just sort of keep improving their panels they have a teflon coating for uh, stain proofing and rain proofing um, like a teflon spray they also have this special thing in the brim where there's kind of like a some type of wire they put in there. They call it, um, there's a name for it. Um, I forgot, snapped or something. But what it does is when the snap gets out of your Panama and it becomes just like floppy and doesn't want to snap anymore, there's a way to repair it yourself. All you have to do is take the brim and bend it down as far as you can. Like just bend it like this way, just go like as far down as you can and let go. And then the snap is back in it. Um, you make a certain kind of a little bend in that um, in that wire that's in there, and that allows it to flip again. So it's like an auto fix for your, you know, uh, soggy brim, floppy soft brim. 
that thing is great too. And um, Capus has like a patent on all those features. Uh, um, they do the uh, you know the Teflon thing, the protector in here, the protector around there, the um, the snap thing. There are all these little upgrades that they give you, and um, they keep their prices down to like that 125 range. You know, good brand. Um, you know, it's hand woven Panama. You get all these nice, nice designs. A center crease, a wide brim center crease, like a three inch, um, a teardrop, which they call the Bogart. Um, they do it in a boater. We have a Panama, hand woven Panama boater, you know, a flat brim. It's just uh, like a regular boater, Italian boater, but it's all Panama. Lighter weight, a little more youthful looking than like a very starchy, you know, heavy weight, uh, old time Italian boater very nice. They do it in um, uh, like a pork pie telescopic crown, like a flat one with a regular snap to. Um, I think we call that the Panama pork pie. Um, there's all these different versions they do in their basic like 125 area, 135, 150 for the wide brim or something. And um, they're all great. They're all fantastic. I love their hats. Uh, it's something I would recommend to almost anybody in the summer. Um, really good. Um, I also really, really like the Irish stuff for caps. Um, I like uh, Jonathan Richards. Um, this is me. I like the Tully, the Baker Boy. Um, I feel like they're the strongest caps pretty much anywhere. I mean, they'll just almost never fail you or shrink or, or have, you'll never have a problem with them. Uh, they sort of last forever. The Hannah Gatsby's also will last you decades and decades. The Hannah stuff, it's a little bit cheaper than Jonathan Richards, but they're not quite as like double thick. They're a little bit more traditional Irish tweed, where the, the, uh, the Jonathan Richards stuff is a little bit more you know, heavier and slightly more funkier, you know, a little more forward Irish. Uh, but you know, they both use Donegal's and everything is like very traditional. But uh, yeah, the Hannah Gatsby, the Tully, uh, I love all that stuff from Newsboys and the Baker Boy, but the um, Baker Boy and the Tully run very big. Sometimes uh, about three quarters, of a, three quarters of a size too big. So, yeah, if you're like you know a seven and one quarter, um, you're gonna be a, a medium, you know, instead of a large. You know. If you're a seven and three eighths, you might even be medium. So you know, follow the sizes that are inside. I think a large is a seven and a half and a medium is a seven and a quarter. So the sizes that are inside the tags are accurate. So that's how those work. Uh, the Tully and the Baker Boy, yeah, they run a little bit big. So if you're wondering how it fits, find out what's written inside there. I believe the medium is a quarter, seven and a quarter, which is 58 centimeters. And um, the large is a seven and a half, a 60 centimeters. So that's a little unusual. They're running a little bigger than most caps, but that is accurate. They mark them accurately, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, that's it. That's um, some, some of these I've gone through in a video or two this week um, or last week or something. But uh, these are the hats, basically, that uh, I think, you know, if you're wondering, like, I don't know, this hat, you know, is a little too soft, or this hat is a little too this or that, well, which ones do you like? You know, Kev, okay? which ones do you recommend? You know, these are just a few hats that I really kind of stand behind, uh, and I like them a lot. Um, Stetson Westerns, like the Rancher, or the Tycoon, the 10X Tycoon, which is actually... The Stetson Shasta, um, with just a slightly more um, velvety texture than their felt, and essentially a, a, a 10x uh, all beaver Shasta. Those two hats, the Rancher uh, 6x and the Shasta, uh, excuse me, Tycoon 10x, those um, are fantastic. The uh, 6x Rancher is essentially rabbit with maybe a pinch of beaver thrown in, and the uh, the 10x beaver is like, you know, uh, it's beaver, so that's really nice. Um, I like those full-out westerns way more than the crossover stuff like the dune and the open road, which are rugged hats, but not nearly as uh, rugged as, let's say, a rancher um, or a, a full western. Um, I'm going to say the rancher is a good one, the Shasta too is a good one. Um, 
What's another one that's full out? I'm going to say the, uh, the Gambler. That's a nice one. It's called the, um, the Full House. Uh, I forgot what it was. Something like that. Yeah, the Gambler. Stetson Gamble. Very good one. Um, Royal Flush. That's it. The Royal Flush. So uh, Royal Flush is another good one. And uh, yeah, if it's a standard Western, yes. If it's an open road or a dune, it's a fantastic hat that will probably last you a lifetime too, but I don't recommend them for heavy rains because the brims, although they're very stiff, they're a little bit thinner and they could, you know, curl or something like that. And if you like your hat to be very crispy with a good, you know, very nice brim shape, you're taking a risk. It might do just, just fine, but there is a risk there. So the full westerns will be a little bit more. Um, and I would say things like Open Roads, Dune, the Dune and the, um, the Tri-City are hats you probably don't want to use as rain hats. I also recommend most fedoras, almost every fedora, they're not rain hats. Use your old fedora. Um, although they're rainproof, they still can lose their shape because they're very soft and they can't hold the weight of rain. The, the water is just too heavy to hold the shape. So um, it's more physics and the way we treat our hats and put them down after the rain, the hot houses we put them into and all those things affect it. And um, they're not meant for it. If you get caught in it, okay. But uh, if you think it's gonna rain, wear your older fedora, fedora, wear something more rugged, or get yourself a cheap rain hat, you know, like a, a Chinese-made poplin rain hat. They look like rain coats. It's like that scratchy poplin kind of hard canvas stuff. They're great. Um, uh, I like them too, but uh, they don't look great, I guess. It's just for the rain. Or use your western hat, or just use your hat that's last on the hierarchy. If you've got your newest hats, your hat from last year, your favorite hats, then you've got the ones you don't like so much, then you've got the ones you kind of hate. Wear the ones you kind of hate when it's raining. Just sacrifice those. You'll find they might do just fine, perfectly. Work your way up your hierarchy. Go to the ones you kind of like a little bit. See how they work. You know, but don't wear the ones that you love and stuff um, in the rain. It's just, and if you have just one hat, uh, I don't know what to say. You know, uh, you can cover them if it's a really bad rain. Uh, we sell rain covers, um, but anything will work. You could just take a plastic bag, fold it into a square, put it in your pocket, and then as you walk home, put the bag over the hat, fold it inside, and then just walk home like that if it's torrential. I'm going to say if it's a small rain, you'll be fine with like 90% of the hats if it's just like drizzles and stuff. But uh, fedoras, again, not meant for rain. They are rainproof, but they're hit and miss. Some of them do perfectly. Some of them do okay for a while. Some of them do great all the time. And you're surprised. They, uh, it's just totally waterlogged and saturated. You, you know, the next day, you, wow, it looks brand new. Um, it happens a lot. To me, I get that all the time. But it's always a risk. So, like I said, the ones down in the hierarchy, the ones that you just kind of like don't like that much, you don't care if they get messed up, that's what you do. I have a couple of hats I call my pajama hats, and um, the brims are all floppy and stuff. I could show you them, and I like that. So if I have any hats stacked, they stay in the bottom of the stack always. Um, it's just a thing I kind of did. There's my pajama hats right over here. Yeah, these ones. So, these are the ones I wear in the rain. They're a little messed up already, and I kind of like that, you know? Um, So I'll wear those babies in the rain, and I'll save this black one for doing these videos and stuff, or, you know, if uh, I have some non-rainy day. So there you go. Um, have your hats that you're going to sacrifice for the rain or whatever. You could get yourself, you know, whatever, a $20 made in China poplin rain hat, it'll probably be okay. Um, but uh, if you have something real nice, don't take the risk, you know. Don't take the risk. It's a risk. You might win it, you might lose it, but it's always a gamble. Always. Um, or step up to something 
a little bit thicker, a little bit uh, shorter in brim, like a Saxon, uh, maybe, um, I'm going to say something like an Akubra, or, you know, a real Western hat, you know, a, a full-out Western, oh, boy, this hat's in bad shape. Yeah, wear one of these pajama hats for today. All right, guys. Um, I hope everybody um, is doing good. Everybody's happy, safe, healthy. Um, and your family and loved ones too. And when, uh, as my good friend uh, calls it, the zombie apocalypse is uh, finished, um, we'll all uh, we'll have a little celebration. Everybody, we'll have a uh, official party on air when everything is uh, clear water and stuff and clean and green and ready to take the masks off and stuff, you know. So, um, in New York, I think they're working their way to phase two now for the vaccinations and stuff. It's not just elderly and frontline workers now. It's, I think, teachers are sort of, you know, getting vaccinated next. So, I mean, it's a, a pretty good thing. I'm actually just talking to you and wasting time so I could just look at my guitar and the monitor to not really listening to what I'm saying. I'm just kind of looking how nice it looks. Yeah. Possessions. Imagine no possessions. Hmm. I guess everybody needs toys. You know that cat. 